Welcome to this Leadership Insight. Uh, this is an insight on leadership and administration, and it's one that kind of came to me just sitting around looking at some administrative structures. I'm currently in a course on developing human capital, which was coming out of a book on reframing organizations, so it really got me to thinking about what does that look like, and there's been a lot of discussion on leaders versus managers, that they're not the same, that they kind of serve two different purposes, and you can be one without necessarily being the other, uh, and rarely, but happens, definitely it does happen, you can get both, um, which is really such a sweet spot. And so uh, I was just thinking a little bit more on administration that refers to themselves as leadership. And that brought up a bunch of questions that we're going to kind of talk about here today. And so I was more thinking on this, looking at what are the actual titles of these administrative positions. Uh, I think this is kind of an interesting thing when you look at just the titling within business anyway there aren't at least that i'm aware of many titles that put leader in it it's a lot of operational manager or operational administrator or even chief executive officer doesn't put leadership directly into it and i thought that was kind of interesting the more i thought about that but that ultimately kind of comes back down to the you know you can be in administration but not be a leader and you can be a leader and not be in administration, but you can also be in administration and be a leader. And so that also started taking me to what this actually means. You know, where does this present a problem? And this is one that I in continuing to learn and trying to work through, but now I'm looking at it from a different perspective. Um, in my career, I've been in charge of departments, and I thought that came with some things, and it did with the title of head or director or uh, whatever it may be, but that doesn't automatically make you a leader. Those two are not exactly the same and just because you have people reporting to you uh, that you're supervising that you oversee that also doesn't correspond directly to you being a leader in terms of some of the different things of having influence or having that visionary or the transformational or servant leadership and a lot of this comes back to you know the actions are what make the leader it's not the position it's what you do to help grow and develop the people that you supervise or that are reporting to you. And so really this was kind of a two-part look at it. And one from the administrative side, and this comes back to a lot of things that I've tried to learn and figure out as I referenced. I was in that role in what I thought was a leadership role and didn't learn it enough and in hindsight would do many things differently um, but now not having anybody report to me or having to oversee a staff or anything of those natures, can I still be a leader and how does that work um, when you don't have the positional authority to make those things happen? And that has been kind of an interesting transition and learning experience for me. But kind of looking at this from the admin side, you know, how do you refer to yourself? Do you refer to yourself as leadership? That happens a lot in multiple um, areas that I've worked. Um, but are you a leader or are you just on the administrative team? Or is it the administration, not necessarily the leadership um, as it comes with that and with that are you self-appointing yourself as a leader can you do that it's like can you give yourself a nickname or does it have to be given to you by other people that go with it so is it that people are going and labeling you as a leader or are they just reporting to you because that's what the structural um, chart says within the organization <laughs> When you're in those roles, are you doing leadership, quote-unquote, things, or are you just doing 
your roles as administration or a manager? Are you doing reports? Are you running meetings? Are you looking at numbers? Are you doing the annual reviews, providing feedback, solving problems, you know, things that are coming up your way because that's what the chain of command dictates? Or are you looking at leadership type things? Are you able to have a vision and what that is and then work to help implement that every single day by engaging your employees and focusing on their human capital by finding initiatives that get them excited to get something done that's going to help the overall organization are you actually connecting with those people? Um, I think now with COVID, it's been even more interesting. Um, but the open door policy, great idea and concept. Um, I've said the same thing myself, but is it actually inviting? You know, Are people actually going to come down to you if they are even able? It's great to have an open door policy, but if that's in another building and it's only during working hours and somebody else is trying to come and see you, but they also work during those working hours, that open door policy doesn't mean as much because they legitimately can't come and see you, and that presents a problem um, with that. So are you actually going out and engaging and finding out what's interesting to them, what problems there are, asking their feedback to solve those problems? I think that's one that definitely in hindsight i would go back and do a lot more with is you know what are the actual issues we're working on and those people that are in the positions that those issues are impacting what are your ideas to solve them you're the ones that are dealing with them you know if you can provide ideas that may help whoever's in that administrative position figure out based on what they know of higher working processes, maybe there is a solution that we just need to combine those two areas of data and experience to get that to happen. And then we had talked about it a little bit, but I think that developing and sharing a vision, um, if you're unable to do that, and that can be hard under levels of organizational structure, but is there a bigger mission that you can then go and help apply to the area that you work and how that impacts that group, but still ties into the much larger picture and goals of the organization. Now, kind of switching to the employees or the workers in this situation and kind of a vantage point from here, one that, again, I'm learning to live within um, and kind of come up with, and even with on different departments that I've worked in, you know, were their leaders there plus the ones above them and how does that impact coming down but from the things we just talked about you know how do you go and do these things on a daily basis as well how can you what are you experiencing where you're at in terms of what you would like to see from leadership is that something you can go and then try and address and try and figure out or try and get nudge hint whatever it may be for those conversations to happen and then just consider you know if in your role do you feel led or do you just feel managed are you just there punching the clock doing your thing or are you given um, the opportunities to do different things that you want to do and get accomplished because it doesn't make up for compensation in a lot of cases, but it can really make things a lot more fulfilling, which may or may not help you out in the long term, depending on what your goals are and how what you value in terms of your job and what you're getting at. But then how can you also look to engage in leadership at your own level? And that's exactly where I'm at now. How do I engage in leadership? All these things I'm learning, the coursework I'm taking without that team that you're quote unquote leading. And that's again, talking about vision, it's figuring out how to solve problems, bringing solutions, maybe again, trying to nudge through various avenues to get people to get to that place that we maybe are looking at. So, um, tying this all back together, you know, administrators aren't necessarily leaders leaders don't have to be administrators you can definitely have both and that is 
kind of the sweet spot of everything, especially when you can get people at high levels of administration that have the ability to make things happen, combine that with what the employees are looking for and what their goals are and how that ties into a bigger vision. It's a lot of work um, just thinking about it, not even ex- putting it into um, execution is dizzying at times but i think if it's really something that is going to go and make a difference it, it's worth that effort um and things that can really make it happen but if you are in that administrative role you know just step back reflect you know be humble about it do you refer to yourself as a leader if you don't refer to yourself do you consider yourself one are you doing those things again in my time in roles that had positional authority I would go back and do a lot of things differently. Uh, I don't think I did what I needed to <laughs> to reach out and find the strengths of everyone, how we can tie those things in, um, not just assume that because of my role that was going to bring people following along, uh, but really try and figure out how to make that happen, and that would have been really important. And then, you know, I think personally that humility and understanding that even in those levels of authority isn't going to necessarily undermine you with the people that you have as reports or your team or employees. I think it's honestly going to be more endearing. It's going to help you solve a lot more problems. Uh, That open door policy may actually become to effect, especially if you're able to then go and find that balance of not just having everybody bring you problems, but really working together to figure out how to solve them, which ultimately should help everything get better. So just some thoughts on leadership and administration and how the two go hand in hand um, and how they could go hand in hand. So Hope you enjoyed this leadership insight. A lot of things coming from Clinically Press. We've got a lot of stuff going on in the background. I know it's been kind of quiet and just stagnant for a while, but um, hopefully a lot of big things coming here in the future, and we look forward to sharing that with everyone. Thanks for listening.